Hey guys, I'm Juan of Stupid Simple Tools, and today we're gonna to be unboxing and setting up our SST21 Lube Cube system onto this belt sander over here. I'm gonna show you how to set it up and how to get it tuned and ready to run. Let's do it. Unboxing, pull this flat from underneath, open it up. First thing you're gonna see is your twin line tubing. It comes with about five feet of these. You're gonna take these inserts out, and then you remove the canister assembly. If you order the polycarbonate, you'll get the polycarbonate. If you order the polypropylene, that'll be blue. You have your mounting bracket. If you ordered the air solenoid kit, you'll get the solenoid as well as all, all the associated pieces. We have our magnetic base in its own box. This comes with your standoff and then some oil paper on the exposed metal to prevent rusting. And the last thing that's in the box is your pressure gauge, which will go into your regulator, some hardware for your mounting bracket and then your lube cube assembly, which comes in its own box. So when you open this up, you'll get your manuals, your stickers, as well as your Mr. Body, your nozzle, which you can insert into there and tighten, and your check valve with an arrow pointing in the flow direction. That's it. You got your lube cube Mr. Body. Big knob is your mixture adjustment knob. You have your coolant intake on the top barb. You have your air intake on the bottom barb. You have the top and backside mounting holes for the magnetic base. So you take your replaceable nozzle, tighten it in there. There's an O-ring that'll seal it against it. And then you're gonna make sure that your set screw is backed out enough for you to install the Mr. Body onto this articulating magnetic base. So take your standoff, kind of just put it in there and screw it in. Afterwards, you want to tighten that set screw to lock the Mr. Body to the standoff and you're ready to rock and roll. So if you ordered a solenoid kit, it's gonna come with the solenoid itself, as well as two of these push fit connectors, a muffler piece, and two of these M4 bolts for securing it. To put the solenoid together, what you wanna do is you wanna take your muffler, insert it into the top piece. You're gonna wanna put Teflon tape or some type of thread sealant on this, of course. These pieces come pre-applied with the thread sealant, so you're gonna put it in there, as well as this other side. And then on the mounting bracket for the lube cube, we put these two holes in for you to be able to lock the solenoid into place. So next, I'm gonna bring the canister into the picture and I'm gonna show you how to attach the mounting bracket to the canister. Just put it on top. You have these M6 socket cap bolts. You're just gonna put those in place. Just gonna tighten these. Cool. So now we have it attached. And the last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take this piece of one foot long tubing, you're gonna insert it into this push fit connector and then you're gonna put it into the regulator setup. And then the final stage is to put our pressure gauge into the regulator. It's NPT, so it'll tighten, but you're gonna wanna put some thread sealer or some Teflon tape on this one. That's it. All right, cool guys. Now that we have the canister assembled, I'm gonna mount it to our pedestal over here so that we can continue the rest of the installation. Now that we got our canister mounted to our workpiece, it's time to connect the tubes between the Mr. Body and the canister. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my magnetic base it's magnetized on the bottom and on the back. In this case, the bottom has kind of a radius curve. So I'm gonna use that to my advantage and try to put it right here because the body is round. Next one I'm gonna do, so I'll grab our twin line polyurethane tubing. And then it's kind of handy to have a pair of scissors around. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your scissors and just kind of snip a little bit right there to start the process of separating these two lines. I'm gonna do the same thing to the bottom side Next thing you wanna do is you wanna identify which tube is which on each side. So I'm just gonna take one and blow into it and identify which side goes with which. So I'm gonna hold both of these ends. I'm gonna take one side of the tubing. I'm gonna put it into either the coolant or the air line on this side, push it all the way up into the bar. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing over here. Since I put it in the coolant over there, I'm gonna take that same line and put it onto the coolant barb of the lube cube. The other one, of course, goes into the airline, like that. And you do the same thing down here. And you're off to the races. All right, guys, next thing we gotta do is we're gonna install our check valve onto the coolant line next to the lube cube. What you wanna do is you wanna cut into this coolant line a couple inches away. So I'm just gonna choose right here. It's about two inches away. And then just insert your check valve in line. Look for the arrow. Arrow points towards the lube cube. That's the direction of flow. And you just wanna splice it in there. Perfect. So now we got the check valve installed. It's important for two reasons. One is if your lube cube Mr. Body is for some reason below the canister, 
it'll prevent all that coolant from siphoning out when you're not looking. And the second big reason that's important is so that this line stays primed with your coolant. So if you're using your solenoid or if you're just manually turning on and off the pressure that's going into the canister, you can get instantaneous fluid out of the mister. And you don't have to wait a couple seconds for the fluid to run through this twin line tubing back to the mister head. Now it's time to give our lube cube an air supply. If you bought the solenoid kit, your air is gonna go in through this side. It'll pass through the solenoid, go through this tube and into your regulator. If you didn't get the solenoid kit, you wanna give your air directly to the regulator and actuate it somewhere else. We include these push fit connectors on our regulator, but you don't have to use it. It's just a six millimeter tubing push fit connector. So if you want, you can use that. Otherwise you can take it off. It's a quarter inch NPT and you could put your own air fitting connector, whatever you want in there. Since every system is different, it's kind of up to you to figure out which fittings you're gonna need for your setup. In this case, all I'm gonna do is I'm taking one of these air distribution connectors and attaching it to this barb fitting. And I'll push some of this single line polyurethane tubing into it and insert it into our solenoid like that. And then this end will go to your air. So now it's time to connect our solenoid to power. If you're connecting this to the machine, you're gonna to wanna to look through your manual and figure out where the IO ports are for your machine. In this case, I'm just using a DC power supply just for the sake of presentation. You have your two lines, neither is positive and neither is negative because it's just an electromagnet. So you can go either which way. I'll just connect them like this. And then once you turn on power over here at 12 volts, you'll hear a click and then this channel will be open. Time has come to fill the system with coolant. To do that, you just unscrew this fill hole right here. This is your cap. You can see it's got an O-ring kind of there at the bottom for sealing. Take your funnel, take your coolant. And then just reseal it. Now that everything's set up, before we finally pressurize the system, there's a couple things you wanna double check. You wanna have your regulator unlocked, so you pull down on it, and then you wanna twist it, twist it, twist it, counterclockwise, so there's no pressure going through it at first. You wanna make sure your canister is nice and tight against the body, and with your lube cube, you just wanna close the valve. So turn it all the way towards the small dots to make sure there's no coolant coming out. Now we got air going into the lube cube. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the knob until the air regulator reads about 10 PSI, which isn't much, at which point you're gonna start feeling air coming out of the lube cube. It shouldn't be mixed with any coolant because we close the valve there. But whenever we're ready to start pushing coolant through, we'll just turn that knob and we'll start spraying. Now I want to show you what I believe is the correct amount of coolant coming out of this system. So right now, the mixture knob's completely closed. I'm going to open it up and you'll see it spray onto the cardboard. And then I'm going to back off. And I'm going to reposition it. And I'm going to wait and count and see how long it takes for it to appear. So now it takes a good couple of seconds for a spot to start appearing on the cardboard. This is what you're looking for. No more than you need, no less than you need. Now we're ready to grind. I set this up. I turned the coolant up a little bit because this is kind of a quicker operation. And then now what I'm doing is I'm monitoring where the coolant's landing on this belt sander so I can make sure I put the piece in that spot. It's landing right there. That concludes our setup of the lube cube system. Once you have the setup finished and finalized, it's very really easy just to grab it and take it wherever you need to, especially with the magnetic articulating base. But good luck with it. I hope you have fun with it. I hope it really improves your cut quality on your belt sander or your drill press or your machine. If you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at support at stupidsimple.tools and uh, enjoy.